There are times where you may want to make your own model or modify a pre-existing one that you have downloaded from sources like Thingiverse. For that, you need a 3D modeling program. Today, we're going to use Tinkercad, a free online resource that is very simple to use and yet is an effective and powerful program. Let's navigate to the website, which is Tinker, and then CAD, C-A-D, all one word, dot com. While Tinkercad is free, it does require you to create an account. Pause this video and spend the next few minutes making one, and then sign in. When you sign in, you will be taken to your profile page. It's okay if this is blank. As you create things, your page will fill up, the way mine is. We are going to make a cute little ray gun for our robot that we downloaded from Thingiverse. To begin, let's click on the plus button next to the create new project on the left hand side, and then click on add description. Let's change our title from project one to robot ray gun, and then save. Now click on the create new design to open the editor. The first thing we are going to do is learn how to navigate in our work plane, which is the blue grid you see before you. Let's start by adding an object to it so that we can see how to move around it. On the right, you will see a panel of objects under the Basic Shapes tab. Drag and drop the pyramid shape into the center of the work plane. Now we are going to take a look at the object from various angles. Notice the cube in the top left corner. If we click on it, it will move our perspective for us in a very fixed way. Spend a few moments and experiment with this. Click all the buttons and see how each shifts our perspective of the pyramid. Now that you've used the view cube to change our perspective, let's find a way to fine tune our movements. First, hit the home icon at the top of the left panel. This button will always bring you back to your home perspective. It is best to use a three button mouse like this one for Tinkercad, but you can also use a trackpad if you're using a laptop. Let's start by rotating around the pyramid. On your mouse, you're going to hold down the right click button and move the mouse from left to right. If you're using your trackpad, hold down the control button and the trackpad button and swipe from left to right. Now, try rotating up and down. Now that we have rotating down, let's learn how to zoom in or out. Click the home button again to start us out in the home perspective. Notice that directly underneath the home button are two other buttons, a plus and a minus. You can click on these buttons to zoom in or out incrementally. You can also use the Z button also known as the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom. Or if you're using the trackpad, we can swipe two fingers up and down to zoom. Now that we have learned how to navigate our view around an object, let's learn how to rotate the object itself. First, let's click on the object. The first thing you will notice is that there are several new icons that pop up. You may need to zoom in or out and navigate around the pyramid in, a, in order to see them all. For now, we are going to focus on the curved double-sided arrows. Hover your mouse over one of them and you will see a wheel with different angles pop up on the screen. Start by holding down your left mouse or trackpad button on the double-sided arrows and then rotate the object to the right by 90 degrees. Notice that the change in rotation is an incremental change of 22.5 degrees and that the red color indicating the change of angle is only active in the inner ring of our wheel. While continuing to hold down our button, if we move our mouse towards the outer ring, you will see the red moves to the outer ring. And now you can rotate the object freely. This may take some time to get used to, but it's useful when adding objects together, as we will see when we make our ray gun. If you rotate your object too much and can't get it back to where you want it, you can use the undo action to go back to your last step, by clicking the left arrow in the top left menu bar, or by pressing Command Z on your keyboard. 
You can also redo an action if you have gone back too far by pressing the right arrow. For now, let's undo our actions until we arrive to the state the pyramid was in when we first started. Now we will learn how to scale and stretch the pyramid to make a custom object. In order to scale our pyramid, we first have to understand how to measure. Our work plane grid is automatically set to millimeters. Millimeters is the common unit used in 3D modeling and printing. However, if you're unfamiliar with the metric system, you can change the units to inches by clicking Edit Grid in the bottom right corner. Now let's again click on the object so that we see the multiple icons pop up. Hover or click on one of the white squares on the corners of the base of the pyramid. Notice that the dimensions for the base of our model pop up in inches. If we click or hover on the white square at the apex of the pyramid, you will get the height of our model. Now by holding down the shift key and our left mouse or trackpad button, we can scale the model larger or smaller. You can do this by doing the same action on the black squares, which represent the midpoints between the white squares. Take a moment and notice the difference between scaling from the apex and scaling from one of the corners. When we scale from the apex, the model stays centered as we change its size. However, if we scale from a corner, the scale shifts the position of the model in that direction. This will be good to remember as we work with multiple objects on the work plane at the same time. Now that we have scaled the object by making it bigger or smaller, let's stretch the object to make it a customized pyramid shape. We can do this by picking any white square and dragging it as we did when scaling, but this time do not hold down the shift key. Pause this video and take a few moments to experiment. Now that we have made a custom shape, let's learn how to move it around the work plane. We can do this simply by clicking on our shape and then holding down the left mouse or trackpad button and moving it freely. Notice that the shape will move in diagonals as well as left to right and up and down. As you start moving multiple objects, you may want to move more precisely. By holding down the shift key while you're moving, you'll be able to move in one direction at a time. If you need to move your object closer or further to the work plane, you can do so by using the black arrow hovering above the apex of your custom pyramid shape. Also. Notice that the distance your object is moving pops up as you move your shape. You may need to navigate around your shapes in order to get a better view of where you want to move the object.